Okay, we might as well uh, jump right in this. Hi, Michael. Good to have you here. Hi, Gloria. Um, yeah, sorry about the email I sent. I sent you 1 p.m., which is my time, mountain time, and I said it was Eastern. I sent a correction email right after, so that may be why people are a bit late. My apologies. I will endeavor to not let that happen again in the future, but I've made promises before. <laughs> so let's get going, shall we? Workshop one, we all we went through everything that you need uh, for your blog. It's the whole machinery. It's the plugins. It's the WordPress blog. It's simply everything that you're going to need plus a few more plugins we're going to talk about today in order for you to have a well-honed blog, one that is safe from intrusion, uh, one that will update automatically. So, you know, the less you have to worry about uh, controlling or um, doing maintenance on your blog, the less. And, and that's better. And that's better for Internet marketers. That, that was uh, workshop one. And Steve did a tremendous job with that. Uh, the second workshop, we talked a little bit about your content strategy. And this workshop that we're going to get into now, uh, we're just going to review content strategy very, very quickly, uh, one more time, so you have, it, you have it solid in your mind how you're going to approach the blogging world, how you are going to um, be remembered for. Uh, how you're going to carry on forward, especially if you will be monetizing your blog at some point. So workshop three today, uh, we're going to be talking about monetizing your blog. We're going to show you how to set up Google AdSense. We're going to talk a bit about the Shareaholic plugin. And Steve's going to talk a little bit about uh, keyword research. Because one, it, it's important to do a bit of research. Because you know, if you do that research, you know what your competition is. And with the proper research, doing it the old SEO way, you can rank your blog on the first page of Google. If you're very, very careful about what it is that you want, to, want your topic to be. So let's get into that right now. So, Niche passion versus money maker. We, we talked about this last week, but really, you have a passion. And your passion is probably shared by maybe millions of other people around the world. And they're people just like you. They're, you know, if you find a topic that you love, you cannot digest enough information about that subject because you get to the point where you want to be in that continual place of learning and growing and you know that is even more important for the person who's doing curation because we're, we're all in the on uh, we're all in curation works as well except for one and for you guys who are in curation works you know keep in mind that you know as a curator you, you've got you you basically have the world right at your fingertips you just have to work through a few simple steps when it comes to SEO and you will have a leg up on the competition. So really today I want you to stop and think for a moment about what your passion is and, uh, and, and decide how you're going to carry that forward. Because there are many individuals online who are earning incredible amounts of income simply by sharing what they love. And you can be one of them. They share on their blog, they share on Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest, YouTube, and so on and so forth. There's so many of them out there now, but people share it. And that is where your opportunity exists, especially as a curator, especially as a blogger. Because in life, in life we are taught that we truly have to sacrifice our time and do something we don't want to do in order to earn an income. In other words, to find gainful employment, uh, you know, we often take that dollar and we sacrifice our life for a career that we really have no interest in, in a career that really doesn't excite me. But the money's decent, so we keep doing that thing that 
that we just carry through each day and, and, and we lose our passion for life when that happens. Now, I personally don't think any of us should compromise on the things we have a passion for. And even a part-time blogger can start bringing in significant income if they do the steps right. Now, you shouldn't settle for anything less either, other than what makes you happy and what drives your passion. So I do think that if you're in a position where your passion or spe special interests aren't being fulfilled in where you're working now or in the career that you're in now, you know, start working on an exit plan. Start working part-time, building the blog that you know that you can build. Because, you know, when you put passion and the curator together, uh, the, the curator over time, because he is curating the information and he's gaining in that learning and he's understanding his niche a little more intimately, then he will be able to pick out those subjects, those things that create excitement, that gain audiences and ignite passions in people. Steve shared a blog post on the on the passing of, uh, what's her name? Que Sera, Sera Lady. And um, Steve had over 900 likes. He, he'll probably give you a, a, a new number on where he is now. But uh, the thing is, it all, yeah, Doris Day, sorry. <laughs> a brain fart. And I, I used to be in love with Doris Day when I was a little kid. I used to think she was the, the most beautiful looking woman in the world and she had a great voice to match. So if you are in that kind of a niche, then, then you know something significant like a death or an event can cause a social media explosion. So you not only know what your niche is looking for, I hear Jan coming downstairs wonder if she needs something. But they will present it in a way that is timely, appealing, and shareable. And that's what professional bloggers do. And that's what Steve did when he made that share for Doris Day. Now, employing the best content practices, curators, professional bloggers, amateurs, you, you're able to put stuff together. Uh, you're able to collate stuff, bring stuff together, aggregate stuff, that you can identify and share that information about the topics that are trending in your niche. And that is why you have to figure it out. You know, am I going to follow my passion by blogging about what I love, or will I take the concepts I learn here and start building a blog that I know is a money maker. Because a lot of us out there, you know, we may have a passion or something that not a lot of people are interested in. And that does happen. Now, there are other niches out there that advertisers will pay a significant increase just because you're talking about something that is important to them. And the niches that pay the most are the ones that are in banking, insurance, car insurance, so if you have an auto blog, they'll pay you well, and so on and so forth. So what is the main topic of your blog? Uh, figure it out. Think about it. What excites you? What turns you on? If you love money, you can make a money-making blog and do the stuff and, and just worry about making money, writing about stuff that you know that these guys are looking for. So how do you want to present yourself in the world? Now I'm going to jump ahead one slide. What role will you play? We talked about playing roles last week. And it's easier to run your blog if you accept that role, if you step into that role, if you consider yourself hired to be this individual for your blog. You know, you could be uh, the expert. Now, we talked about the expert last week, right? Here, hang on. I'll pull that little talk up here. The expert wants to be seen as he's the number one go guy. He's the best in his field is the ultimate source of knowledge for anything on the topic. You could ask him something mundane and he'll know the answer. The expert's blog post will be tightly focused on a few categories, not a whole bunch. 
and the ones that he is focused on, he will be very, very detailed about it. Providing, you know, providing you the information that you might be looking for. And the expert prides himself in being the best at what he does. Now, this is my approach to, uh, to my blog, uh, The Reporter. I like the latest news. I like the gossip. I like sharing stuff. <laughs> so whether it's, and you might too, so whether it's fashion or technology, natural foods, natural health, health and wellness, you know, if, it's, if there's anything happening in that, in that area, then I'm willing to share that out. So being the reporter, I don't have to think about, you know, making, uh, creating information for my blog. I can just report the stuff that's important to my niche. So being the reporter is really important. The storyteller is someone who likes to write. And, um, you know, if that's you, fantastic. I am going to recommend, though, that you curate as well. Uh, Steve did some work, uh, research on curation for one of our future talks. I think it's out of every 10 blogs, seven should be curated and three should be original content. I think that's correct. Now I'll get Steve to talk about that when he's up. Now the marketer. This is a money-making guy or the helper. Sorry, the helper. Now if you have a helper type blog, you're in for a treat because people pay you big bucks to put ads on your site. So if you've got to do it your website, yeah, that's right, Mike. That's right. So decide what it is you're going to be. So six created, three originals, and one outright sales post. So that's how a marketer works, okay? You're going to curate six. You're going to write three originals. And you're going to make a sales one, too. That's like original copy as well. So you could tailor your blog around that. So the helper, let's get back to him. Do-it-yourself blogs, home repair blogs, fixing your furnace blogs, or anything. You know, if you do a video and throw it up there and put Google AdSense or Google Ads on there, uh, you're going to get the highest possible um, revenue from doing that type of from doing that type of blog. Now the marketer, the single purpose for blogging for the marketer is to get people into his business and so that he could start making money. And really if that's you, your passion is money and you're in it for the money. And you know, God bless you if, if you're a full-on marketer like that because full-on marketers make a fortune online. They absolutely do. So let, just let me pop back. Who are the top five bloggers in your niche? It's important that you write that down <clears throat> as well because in order for you to do a good job of understanding what your niche is looking for, you might as well follow the top five guys, uh, subscribe to their RSS feeds, and see what they're putting out there every day. See what they're putting out there each week because it'll give you a clue as to what your market is looking for. So. Top five bloggers in your niche. Just go find them. You'll know who they are. Just do a Google search. They're usually the first sites that come up or the first blogs that come up. And when you do a search, search blogs. You know, you don't have to search the web. Search blogs specifically, and you'll be able to figure out who the top three to five bloggers are in your, in your realm. Now, a little bit more work here. You've got to work out what your top three to five categories are going to be. This is what your blog's going to be about. And that's important. Now, Steve's got a session. I'll give you the mic in a few minutes, Steve. But Steve's going to show you how to do uh, some keyword research so that you can identify your categories, so you can identify what you're going to start writing about. And the final question that you have to answer is how frequently are you committed to publishing new content? And to me, this is probably uh, the most important information that I have to share. The most effective day to publish posts on the weekend. <laughs> Who would have thought? But on the weekend, your posts are being shared way more times on social shares. Why is that? Because business isn't working. 
there's no new content coming out on the weekends. So blogs posted on Saturdays, Friday nights have the greatest share of social interactions. So do that. So when you're doing your content strategy or, or your content marketing schedule, schedule maybe three, maybe four posts on the weekend and trickle three throughout the week. Best time to publish, of course, is between 9 and 11 p.m. Eastern time and they get the most shares. Now there are a few other times that are peaks as well. Uh, secondary peak 4 to 6 a.m. So if you're an early riser, uh, that's a good time to post. 7 to 8 p.m. because you're catching the moms and pops just checking their computer before they go to bed. And then 1 and 2 a.m. you're catching the shift change workers as they come in at the end of their uh, late shifts. So those are the best times to do your posts. So it doesn't matter if your niche is what your passion is or if it is a money maker. When you learn how to start your blog and set it up properly, uh, you want to be able to make sure that thousands of people, preferably if not millions of other people, share your enthusiasm for what it is you're doing. So if it's a money maker type of blog, then you're going to have a, a lot of guys who love money on your blog. And they're just going to be loving what you're doing. And they will be paying money for your products and services that you have to offer in that niche. So it's good to get that keyword research done. So no matter, so no matter what, it doesn't matter if it's a money-making blog, it doesn't matter if it's following your niche passion, the whole key to the whole thing is figuring out your keyword strategy and then start stitching together your blog as you go along. Now you may find that as time goes on, uh, you're not catching that social stampede, as it were, uh, that you were hoping for. So well, that, when that happens, you go back to your keyword research. So it's something that isn't done once, it's something that you're going to be working with all the time. And with that, I am going to, yeah, I'm going to, uh, give the room to Steve, and Steve, you can uh, bring us up to date on, on uh, keyword research. Thank you. Okay. All right, let me get this uh, sort of settled here. You don't want to be looking at that gigantic microphone the whole time. Doesn't matter, I guess. Anyway, <laughs> um, I'm not in my normal spot today, so a little discombobulated here. That was great, Don. Um, first of all, can everybody hear me okay? Is everything all right as far as sound goes? I'm going to go through a lot of information. Good. Uh, you do not have to worry too much about taking notes here. Um, these slides are available uh, in the shared files folder. There's a, a file uh, of these as a PDF so that you can grab these. Um, before we dive right into things, let's talk for a second about why we need to do this. Uh, I mean, isn't, you've heard me say it, you've heard me tell you that you don't really have to worry about SEO anymore uh, because uh, on-page search engine optimization is basically dead because of the way Google operates now and the other search engines emulate Google. Um, over the last three years, everything has changed. As far as search engine optimization, that is what uh, has enabled us to develop curation as a strategy that works to build traffic and to build your reputation and uh, to get you found on Google. It used to be that if you were curating stuff, you would get the Google slap and nobody would ever see, for you, see you again. And that's because the, they used to do things in a completely different way. And one of those things was keywords. We could do something called keyword stuffing, and I was really good at it. I could look at, do some keyword research, very similar to what I'm doing right now. I'm going to show you. And um, write a blog post, cramming that word in as many times as I could. You know, select a good keyword based on a few criteria. And 24 hours later, that blog post would be on the front page of Google. Uh, and what we were doing when we did that was we were gaming the system. 
we were learning how the algorithm looked at what you put on a page and composing everything and putting the information on the page that would cause it to rank you uh, right on the front page of Google, whether or not your information was any good. Because in those days, Google wasn't really reading your posts. It was looking at how it was constructed, but it wasn't really reading it. Nowadays, three years later, we got a whole different ball game because Google and all the other search engines are really reading your posts. They're keeping track of what's on your blog over time. They're looking at how at all the social actions now that in, are involved with what happens on, you, you know, you can have the best information in the world on your blog. And if nobody likes it and nobody shares it, it will not be found. That's the game now. Okay. Um, so things are totally different. So why are we talking about keywords? We're also talking here about um, building your blog. And one of the building blocks that we use is how people talk about things. This is where we tie everything into the social networks. How people talk is how they search for things. How people talk about your niche, whether you're in you know, health and wellness or uh, you're in internet marketing, you know, affiliate programs or whatever it is, whatever you do, if you're in golf or you're in sports or whatever it is, the way people search for things in search engines, the terms they use to discuss that subject in social networks, those are keywords. And so if you tie into those in the construction of your blog, for instance, your categories, and you tie into those with the titles of your blog posts, and you use those terms consistently throughout the content of your blog, while you're providing good information consistently from highly respected sources and adding your own <laughs> value to it, then if, you're good, if you do that, you're going to be just loved by Google, all right? This is where keyword research comes in now because we need to know how, number one, we need to know how uh, people are discussing our subject. What terms do they use? I may call something health, health and wellness. Somebody else may call that exact same subject natural health, okay? Um, so what we need to know is we need to know which is a better way to do that, <laughs> to, to discuss it, you know? Um, and what's going to give us the most bang for our buck when we do discuss it. So right from the very beginning, you want to do your keyword research really before you start getting too involved with putting your blog together with uh, developing your content because it's going to give you a big clue as to what your categories should be, what your blog titles should be. So what we're going to talk about doing is we're going to talk about doing a lot of keyword research and developing a list, a big list on a notepad file of maybe hundreds of keywords that have to do with your uh, particular niche. And then having those words available at any time you like uh, to reference so that you can use them for blog titles, so that you can use those terms in your blog, uh, and we'll, I'll show you, tell you exactly how I do that. But first, we're going to talk about what you need and how you actually go about researching uh, a keyword, because most people are just lost. They, they hear keyword research and they don't know what that means, okay, at all. Um, and it's really simple for what we're going to show you. All you need is a Google search, which everybody can access with a, you know, with a browser. Uh, you're going to need an AdWords account because you're going to want to use the Google Planner the keyword planner. Now you can get an AdWords account for free and then once you do that, you can use the tool, okay? Uh, you don't have to, uh, you know, I don't advise anybody advertising on AdWords uh, anymore unless you got a lot of money you wanna throw away and you wanna compete with people who are willing to pay $12 a click for good words, you know? Um, corporate clients and things like that. It's not what it used to be. It used to be we all started out doing Google AdWords um, for 25 cents a click, and those days are gone. So just stay away from it. And what you want to do is get on the the organic search results, and that's by curating a blog over a period of a few months with a lot of good information and using what we're, I'm going to show you now the right way. Okay, you're also going to need a notepad file because we're going to start building this list. 
All right. Then you got to ask yourself, what are your objectives? Okay. There's really only two things that you need to know when you do keyword research. You're trying to find out what your competition is like and are there any customers? That's the, those are the two questions that you do. You ask yourself anytime you're going to do anything in business. I mean, if you're going to open a store down here on Big Bear Boulevard, um, and you know, you want to find out, uh, you, or you're going to open, uh, uh, I don't know, a, a ski rental place down here on Big Bear Boulevard. Okay, we got two ski resorts here. Um, you're going to open one of those. And you you want to find out what's the competition like. Are there too many others out there already so that you're just going to get trampled by, you know, no customers? And are there any customers for what you're going to put out there? If you're going to you know, if you're uh, going to put something here that's never been done before, are there customers out there that are willing to buy from you? Okay. Um, those are the two things you need. Now, what those boil down to in our case here online, what is the competition like? That's how many websites are tied into the same keyword. If you've got 80 million websites tied to your keyword, it's going to be hard for you to claw your way up to the top of that heap and appear in the first 10 or 15, um, where if you've got 2,000, it'll probably be pretty easy for you to get up there, all right? Um, and are there any customers? That means is anyone searching the term? Does anyone actually put that word into Google to find where, you know, what you've got? Um, those are the two things we need to do that we need to find out. The first one we do with Google search. The second one we do with a Google keyword planner. It's very, very simple. Um, that's <laughs> okay. Okay. I just already talked through this slide. Aren't I fast? My mouth is really fast. What's the competition like is Google search. Are there any customers? That's the Google keyword planner. And I'll show you how to use both of them. Now, why are we looking for this and what kind of criteria are we looking for? The, when it comes to how many websites are tied into something, a really good keyword is going to have 100,000 or less in what's called a narrow search. Now, I'll show you the difference between a general search and a narrow search in a minute, and I'll explain it to you. But in a narrow search, if you can get a keyword that has 100,000 uh, sites or less, you got a pretty good chance of being right up there in number one, two, three, or four spot, okay, if you do your posts. Um, the way we teach you in curation works, basically. Uh, number two, are there any customers? Now, this is more these days determined by your personal objectives. It used to be, you know, if your objective was to get on the front page of Google within 24 hours and you wanted a money keyword, then what you wanted to do was find something that had a thousand searches a month or more, because otherwise it wasn't worth you doing this, all right? However, uh, I don't know about you, I'm in a health and wellness company, and uh, if I'm uh, doing a blog post on a certain subject, let's say I'm looking at, uh, you know, blood pressure, lower blood pressure naturally as a, as a keyword, and we'll, we'll run into that in a minute. Let's say uh, I'm, uh, it only shows me that there's 210 people that search that term every month. Well, if it's very easy for me to do this and, um, you know, just one blog post, I could be on the front one, two, or three search results if I've got a low number of competition um, and I'm, you know, looking at only 210 people a month. Well, guess what? Those are 210 people that are going to see my product uh, that wouldn't see it before. And I'm not going to sneeze at those people. Now, you get down to 75, 65, things like that. Um, it might, you know, be worth maybe using a different term. But the fact of the matter is that this is all up to you. Uh, and as you'll see as we get into this, there's, it's kind of an art. There's more of an art to this than a craft, and there's no solid rules um, for, you know, wh when you should or should not use a keyword. Uh, and if something is a vital keyword that everybody's using to discuss your you know, a particular subject, you want to use it, whether it's got a lot of people that are going to see it every month or not. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll show you some other tricks here as to, uh, you know, whether whether something's worth uh, actually using as a keyword as we go on. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to do, let's say we're going to do some key keyword research. Uh, you're going to go to Google is the first place you're going to go. And you got to do some brainstorming first. Now, 
uh, what I would do is I would sit down and I would just make a list of words that you think are keywords. Uh, now, you know, you don't want to uh, concentrate on big open-ended keywords like health, all right? That's, you're going to get all sorts of things when people search for health. What are, you know, you're going to get billions and billions of results in there. And that's because saying health uh, is going to mean, you know, all sorts of different things. So you want to use what, what are called long tail keywords. That's when we get a little more specific, health supplements or natural health practices or things like that, okay? So you want a, 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 some, a, a list of really good keywords and you want to go through, if you're a company, you know, you represent a network marketing company that's got 350 products, you might pick out your seven or eight most important product lines and then go through and create a list of, you know, all sorts of words that, uh, you know, you might have anti-aging, you might have anti-aging cream, you might have resveratrol anti-aging, you might have, you know, all sorts of things like that. And you'll come up just brainstorming with a whole list. So do that first. And then what you got to do is you got to get your list together and organized. And you're going to uh, find out what the statistics are for each of your keywords. Now, when you see our stuff here today, uh, Don and I run a blog called uh, Tips About Healthy Living. And uh, we've got, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 different uh, notepad files full of 60 or 70 keywords on each one, and they're classified in different ways. There's literally hundreds of them. Uh, and we've got all the numbers on all of them. And the, I'll show you the reason we do this and how we do how we use it. But don't let this thing. Don't think that you know you're, you're going to look up eight keywords and that's what you're doing here. This is going to give you, if you do this right, it'll give you the blueprint of how you organize your blog, and it will also give you titles for your blog posts. It'll also give you uh, how you're going to compose your own contributions in your blog posts. So this is something that you'll refresh all the time and that you'll refer to all the time. Every time you're going to make a blog post, you're going to look at this until you know it enough. You know, start to get to know certain things that you post about all the time. You don't have to look at the thing because you just know what the keywords are. All right. So um, that's what we're going to start doing. We're going to go to Google and let's say we're going to look at lower blood pressure naturally. So we're going to Put that in there. What's the first thing that happens anytime you put something in Google? Boom, you get this big drop down menu. And what are those? Those are suggestions. These are suggestions for other keywords. And you want to start paying attention to these right off the bat because anything that appears there is a keyword. It has actually, the only reason it's showing up there is because it's actually been searched on Google within the last 30 days, all right? If it's not been searched on Google, it's not there. Now, these are all coming up under lower blood pressure naturally. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put lower blood pressure naturally on my notepad file, okay? I'm also gonna look through that list again and see if there's anything in there I might wanna look at and I'm gonna put that on there as well. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and put lower blood pressure naturally supplements um, in there. Now, you have to realize sometimes you're going to get uh, keywords that are going to be viable search terms that people will use, but they're not going to be things that you can really use when you're writing. I can't think of a way that I would use lower blood pressure naturally supplements. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, now I could put a with in there and it would probably work sometime, uh, you know, sometime in my writing. Um, we're going to learn how to lower blood pressure naturally with supplements and that, you know, that would make it work. But, um, this, you know, this was suggested by Google, so I'm going to put it there. All right. So now we've got two. Now I'm going to show you some other ways to get things here. Let's say we, we start to take off uh naturally okay where we, we just start backing up our cursor and we're going to go back down to lower blood pressure naturally um and we're going to take the naturally off and we're just going to put a then we're going to get all of these that uh are suggestions for lower blood pressure naturally and starts with a 
after exercise, at home, and cholesterol diet. And we're going to write down everything off of there on our notepad file that could possibly work. Then we're going to take the A off. We're going to put a B on. We're going to get these. Lower blood pressure before test. Lower blood pressure breathing. Low by losing weight. Bottom number. Breakfast. Beet juice. You know, all of this stuff. And we're going to pick out the ones that might work for our website. Okay, that we could use in our writing about our product or anything like that. And I'm going to take the B off and use a C and do exactly the same thing there. All right. Uh, and I'm going to come up with a whole bunch of other suggestions that I never thought of, but are actually being used by people searching Google today. Okay. So I've come up with these other things. And what I'm going to do is as I build up this whole list, I'm going to build up a, a list that, that all stems from lower blood pressure, and uh, I'm going to uh, go through and get the numbers for each and every one, and this will build my blood pressure portion of my uh, keywords. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and run lower blood pressure naturally, all right? And um, that's going to show me, if you look in the... Uh, this box right here, okay? Um, that shows me that there are 13,200,000 websites tied into that. And I'm going to go over on my notepad file, see my arrow over there, and I'm going to put that number right there. Tells me there are 13,200,000. Now that is pretty heavy competition. It's not in the 70 or 80 millions, okay? But that's pretty heavy competition. Now, in the meantime, I'm going to note a couple more things, the other arrows that are on this site, uh, on the results page here. And those are showing me that there are uh, people paying to be on this page. Those are paid ads. Those are Google AdWords. And as long as you see those there, you know that somebody's making money with this search. All right, that's the that's what that tells you because they're not going to be unless they're dumb they're not going to be paying to be on there uh, unless they're getting their money back. All right, so um, the fact that there are Google AdWords is telling you this is a money page. Um, however, the competition is pretty darn high. Now we got to talk for a little um, uh, just very quickly about the different kinds of searches. When I put lower blood pressure naturally into the search engine like that and just search, that it's telling me there are 13,200,000 pages that use those four words somewhere on the page. So if there's an article that says, um, we're going to show you how to achieve lower blood pressure, and then two paragraphs later it says, uh, naturally, you'll want to do this with the heaviest drugs possible. That page is going to show up. The reason is all four words are used. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're used as a phrase in the way that we use it. All right? So we want to do a narrow search. This is a broad search. We want to do a narrow search to find out where the phrase is used and uh, to find out what our competition is then. And that's very easy to do. So what we do is just put quotes around our search term. Okay, we're going to get the drop down again, but just add quotes to it, run the search term, and boom, our number goes down to 150,000. Now, <clears throat> we go over to our notepad file, and we put a little slash there and put 150,000. So now our notepad file is telling us that lower blood pressure naturally has 13,200,000 websites on a broad search, but only 150,000 on our narrow search. Now, what did I tell you earlier? 100,000 or below is really good, okay? That's good competition. That means you can probably put something up on the, on the first page. If you're good, you can put something up on the first page uh, that'll show up there in two or three days. You know, and if your blog has been online for a while and you've got a reputation with Google, they'll serve you up on the first page very quickly. You have to build that reputation these days. It's not going to show up tomorrow, okay, in all probability. But um, 
the fact is that's uh, that 150,000 is not outrageous competition. After you've been curating and blogging the way we teach you to do it for three or four months, you can look at you know three quarters of a million, a million uh, in competition in a narrow search. And you know you you can know that in, in a couple three months I can I can get onto the first page of that search, all right. Um, you can do a lot more. Like Google's really made it a lot easier for us than it, than it used to be. So what we've done now is we've looked at this word and we found out what our broad and what our narrow competition is. The narrow competition is the one that you care about. It really is the only one you care about. Uh, because uh, Google really works to um, serve up the best search results it can. That's their main concern. And when people search lower blood pressure naturally, they want to see that term used in specific places. Notice the prevention.com first search result, 13 ways to lower blood pressure naturally. Okay? Um, they're serving that up because it's right in the title. Um, if you look into the blurb there, it's in the blurb. All right. Lower blood pressure naturally and quickly with 13 tips. All right. So uh, if you use the phrase and you use it where we teach you, in the title, you know, in the H1 tag, uh, several times in the content, in the description, you know, things like that, then you're going to end up right close to the front page. Now, you got to look at who your competition is, and it's prevention and health and WebMD, you know, so mm -mm, that's a little little tough on this one, <laughs> okay? But um, these are your numbers, and we we'll start to build our numbers on our notepad. Now, notice also there's no ads on this page. Um, I don't know why that is. Uh, it, it's a money page without the quotes. Apparently, nobody's searching with the quotes, all right? So um, people, uh, nobody's specifically using the quotes as uh, in their keywords when they create their AdWords. So there's none appearing here, which is an interesting thing. Somebody might uh, go out and do some money making on that. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to take the next one and we're going to put it in the next one and do the same thing, get the same numbers. And pretty soon we're going to go ahead and find out that on the first three, we have all of our numbers. Now look at you know, lower blood pressure naturally fast. There's only 2,680 websites tied into that, okay? Um, and, uh, you know, you can you, you can put a comma in there, lower blood pressure naturally, or you could put an and, and fast, you know? Um, lower blood pressure naturally with supplements. Remember, guys, Google doesn't look at little words. Um, it throws out ands, ofs, the, things, you know, is, uh, so uh, those kind of things you can insert in some of these things that are awkward. So now we, we go ahead and we're building our list of phrases and we're noting the competition and we go through and we do all of these words, you know. And when we get through, we've got a whole list here and we know what our competition is on each of those websites. So this is the process for finding out what your competition is. Now, now we have to find out if anybody actually, uh, you know, goes into those stores. In other words, does anybody uh, actually, you know, search these terms and how many people search uh, every month? Now, if you've gone through what we did before and you found ads, Google AdWords on every page, you know, 99.999% sure somebody's searching it because somebody's spending money to be on it. And if they weren't searching it and nobody was clicking on those Google AdWords, they wouldn't be spending the money to be on that page. So we already know the answer to, is anybody searching those things? Yes, they are, because there's Google AdWords on them. Now, I want to show you also, wait, I didn't show you this. Oh, it's not there. I'll show you later. Um, so now we want to find out, though, exactly, well, you know, it's best, if you're going to look at uh, weighing one keyword against another, you want to make sure that you know, okay, there's more traffic to this one than there is to this one. That's an important thing to know. If you're going to pick three keywords to optimize on a, bro, you know, a blog post, you want to know what order they're in, you know, which are the most popular. So we go to our AdWords account, um, which I mentioned before you have to get one, and then uh, just go to the keyword planner, and it starts to ask you all sorts of questions. This thing does all sorts of things. I like the old keyword tool, Google keyword tool. 
better. And there are some other things I use for the same information um, that, you know, ask me if you want to and I'll, I'll tell you. But this is the one that everybody needs to know. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff here that if you're not advertising on Google, you don't have to pay any attention to. All right. So we're going to make this very simple. Where it says find new keywords, you're going to click search for new keywords using a phrase, website, or category. And that will open up this other uh, little light box here. And you're going to just copy and paste all your keywords right into there. Okay. It says enter one or more of the following, your product or service. Don't pay any attention to that. You know, Just uh, go ahead and put your keywords in there. All right. We're asking it to find us new keywords, but it's going to give us all of the information we want. So it doesn't matter if you put one in there or 150. Go ahead and just put them in one per line. And then down in targeting, you got to you, you want to make sure you're targeting where you want to target. The default is everywhere in the world. OK, um, I'm going to use the example of, you know, our tips about healthy living blog is because we both represent a certain network marketing company. And uh, it's a health and wellness company. And we've, you know, we decided we didn't want to deal with, we can go in all sorts of different countries, but um, it's simply easier for us to target things in Canada and the United States. So let's say you want to do that. A lot of, a lot of people in network marketing companies just want to stick with North America. All right. Well, so what you're going to do is you're going to go there and you're going to click on that thing under targeting and you're going to make it say United States. So the first results are, we're going to get are just for the U.S., all right? Now we're going to go ahead down to the bottom and click, uh, you know, the, the button at the bottom, and boom, we get this information. Now you'll see up on the left, the first arrow, it's going to show you that we are targeting the United States. You want to make sure in the first box, the little box, that we have clicked keyword ideas, not ad group ideas. And you'll see there's our three keywords, and there is the amount of average searches per month. That is average for the last 12 months, okay? Uh, the old Google keyword tool gave you what was last month, all right? This is the average for 12 months. So you can see lower blood pressure naturally has been searched 3,600 times. Lower blood pressure naturally fast has been searched only 170 times. And lower blood pressure naturally supplements is only searched 30 times. Now, um, it tells you what Google's idea of the competition is. We know what the competition is. Um, whatever Google says here, you know, their uh, their idea of what their comp what the competition is is usually pretty bent in my opinion, so I don't pay that much attention to it uh, unless I'm going to be using it for uh, you know maybe an indicator of well I should I haven't looked at this word before I it says low here so maybe I should go and look at it in Google search under my terms okay so I can use that as an indicator in that way but I don't ever go by it. Uh, make any kind of final decision. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to, on my notepad, um, I'm going to put over to the right of where our competition is, I'm going to put the numbers for what our uh, searches per month are for each of the keywords. All right. Now, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to targeting, which is now on the United States, and that's in that upper left hand corner. You'll see it up there with the red arrow. Um, let's go in close. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to click on the little edit tab. It's going to open this other uh, light box. And I'm going to put Canada in the search box there and come up with uh, the drop down shows me Canada. I'll, I'll select that. And over on the right hand side, I will click that remove. All right. Um, so I've put Canada in there and taken the United States out. Now we come back and I, it's, it shows me I'm targeting Canada and the numbers have changed. This is the same information for Canada. I'm going to go to my notepad file. I'm going to put a little slash and I'm going to put how many times those words are searched in Canada. Now I can look at the first one and know that the total for North America is 3810. OK, uh, the total of the second one is only 40. And the total of the third is 190. OK, total searches. <clears throat> so in this way, I'm putting together 
this uh, uh, notepad file. Now notice suggestions over there on the left. That's because I'm only showing you the top part of this page. Down below there is something that looks like this. And this goes on. If you look at the right-hand side of the right tab at the top, it'll say add all 803. It's giving me 803 suggestions for keywords that tie into what I just searched. And it's giving me the average monthly searches for each one. So every time I do this, I'm also looking for new keywords that we could put on our list that I haven't thought of yet or haven't appeared in the drop down, drop down boxes, all right? And I can tell right here how many searches they've got. <clears throat> this is just a wealth of information, guys. Um, like I say, I don't put too much information into, um, uh, you know, what the, what the competition is listed as. And you can um, sort these by average monthly searches. You can sort them by relevance. You can sort, sort them in alphabetical order. Um, and you can put them into a PDF file and download the whole thing. I mean, into a CSV file and download the whole thing. So there's tons of stuff that you can do here. Mainly, we are just building our list. Now, here's one of the lists. You'll see what we were working on here <clears throat> um, was uh, high blood pressure keywords. Now, look at the, at the um, list itself. You'll notice that it's tips about healthy living keywords, disease-based. Because a lot of time, a lot of times, you know, you have a lot of posts about certain diseases that your supplements might be able to help people with. All right, high blood pressure is one of those. Celiac disease is another one for uh, for us. Diabetes is another one. Breast cancer, you know, and and if you're running a health and wellness blog, you might post all sorts of things about you know research into different diseases. And then you might recommend, you know, hey, to help avoid this uh, in your later years, you might want to stock up on a lot of this when you're young. You know what I mean? Um, and <clears throat> so this is one of the ways that we've divided our keywords. Now, let me tell you how this all works. First of all, you're going to want to use these to look at your categories, okay? Um, for instance, high blood pressure might be a category. You know, you might have... Um, you know, diseases might be a category, and then subcategories might be high blood pressure, celiac disease, diabetes, breast cancer. You know, you might have a lot of subcategories in there. Um, there's, you know, a million different ways to do it. But this will tell you, this will give you a good idea, and you can lay it all out. If you do all your keyword research first, this will give you a good roadmap. Now, when it comes time to put, start putting content on your blog, I use this all the time. Um, let's say I'm out there and I'm doing something for tips about healthy living, and I find a, a, you know, a, a really interesting article about, um, you know, a, well, let's, let's say um, they've just done a whole bunch of research, and um, they've found that the people who eat certain superfoods have been uh, really successful at lowering their blood pressure naturally, okay? And let's say it's about five uh, superfoods, okay? And well, okay, well, I can look here and I can look at, okay, lower blood pressure naturally, um, reduce blood pressure naturally, lower blood pressure naturally, okay, lower blood pressure naturally fast. There's only 2,680 websites tied into that. Now, it's only searched 40 times a month total. But I could definitely get on the first page of Google for that search for those 40 people. Or we could say reduce blood pressure naturally, okay? There's 1,446, excuse me, 13,000, 14,000 searches made a month and only 411,000 websites tied into it. So I could say... Five superfoods that reduce blood pressure naturally as the total of my blog post sharing this other article, okay? And so that would be in my H1 tag, five superfoods that reduce blood pressure naturally. It's my title, guys. And then in, um, you know, in my H2, I might use reduce blood pressure naturally um, by eating celery and 
doing it in something else. Okay? Um, or and enjoy doing it. Things like that. So I'm using this, and then, then what I would do is I would look at what are the three best out of there that I could just use, and I could use reduce blood pressure naturally, lower blood pressure naturally fast, and lower blood pressure naturally, okay? Um, and I could put them in an order that I decide that I'm going to use them. Use one for the title, one for the H2, put one in the H3, and then just use them each once or twice when I write when I write my blog post. That's it. That's how I'm using this. Okay, and I'm not going to worry about it any more than that. And those, for instance, would be really easy to do. We all worry about lower, you know, how we can. Uh, we're all looking for a way to lower our blood pressure naturally. Then I talk about things for a while, and the, then I later uh, in a second paragraph I can say, "Did you know that there are five superfoods that can lower blood pressure naturally?" Um, and, and uh, you know, they can help lower your blood pressure naturally and fast. See what I'm doing? I'm doing the uh, using this all the way through it. Then yes, done. Then then what you do is when you share this, this goes in the de these keywords go in the description. At least the number one goes in the description that you use in your all-in-one SEO pack or your SEO presser or your Yoast plugin. Okay. Um, you, you have that, that at least the number one keyword in that description. And then you use these when you create your blog post. I mean, excuse me, when you create your Facebook post, when you create your Twitter uh, tweet, when you create your um, Google Plus sharing. Uh, so uh, all of this ties in together and all of it uh, kicks up the ante on where you end up in the search engines. This is the kind of list you want to put together. We've got hundreds of keywords for tips about healthy living. If you're doing a health and wellness thing with, you know, 350 products in your company and stuff like that, you can have hundreds and hundreds of keywords. Now, I'm not telling you don't do anything until you get this all built. But, I'm gonna, but I will tell you, it'll help you to get the very foundational part of this built uh, you know, your, your, your big general uh, ones built before you start doing your categorization and your content mounting because um, it'll give you the roadmap to where you're going. That's the most important thing that keywords are. They're the roadmap for uh, search engines to find your content and categorize your content and to let Google know that you're, you've got a good roadmap so things are easy to find for people who visit you, but it's also your roadmap as to how you put everything together. So that's it uh, as far as I'm concerned for today. Just remember what your research objectives are, what's the competition like, um, and are there any customers, and make your list, put your list all together, uh, and then work off your list as you build your content. Okay, and if you got any questions, Hey, Steve, that was awesome. That was awesome. What we're going to do right now is, Steve, if you can go back into chat, that'd be awesome. Uh, Jan's going to come up and talk about uh, lead capture page, um, getting subscribers to your blog, that type of thing. And uh, it's just kind of a little bit out of step because Jan's got to run. So, Jan, come on up. Well, hey, everybody. Great to be here. Got my computer back up and running. And oh, I'm telling you, I uh, talk about being a little bit out of sorts. I know, Steve, you're you're not at your normal place. I'm back home. We're back home. But it's um, we've been grandparenting out at the acreage last night and again tonight. And we're leaving first thing tomorrow morning to head to Victoria. So I'm pretty excited about all that. It's also causing me to go. <laughs> <laughs> breathe you know i'm really having to practice everything i preach every day breathe turn it over to the manager uh, hmm. uh the videos for curation works oh maybe daughter steve can answer that all right guys i'm i'm gonna go through this fairly quickly and um for anyone who's listening to the re replays 
just before I go through this, if there's any areas that you need help with that you don't understand, such as, you know, setting up your autoresponder campaign, things like that, if you're not sure how to do that, get in touch with me. You can get me on Skype at Janet Leger, just one word, my name. Uh, I'm sure with the videos, my contact information will be there. I'm happy to help you get to that stage where you're building your list and you really understand how to set up your campaign and, and use it. But I think for most of us here on the live call, you're a little bit familiar with this. At least you better be. <laughs> Right? I mean, you've all been working with me for uh, many years, most of you, and and hopefully you've been doing at least a little bit of what I teach. <laughs> if not, oh boy, are we in trouble. So what I'm going to go through here today, I found a really cool thing. I don't know. Did you guys know? I'm just curious. going to ask it out there. Did you know that you can do a pop-up subscriber form for GVO? Did anybody know that, that there was a, that you can add to your website? I had to go and figure out how to make that work. There were no instructions, but pretty cool. So I'm going to show that to you. I'm going to show you how to add an opt-in opt widget to your sidebar. And you know what, guys, something I'm going to tell you right now, and I'm going to repeat it when I get to that section. I don't know how many times I go to a blog, and on the right-hand side, there's an ad at the top, or... Uh, anything. There's something other than an opt-in form. So I'm, are you all listening to me? Will you please make note of this and please adhere to this? You'll thank me for it. Make sure that on the top right-hand side of your blog, on your sidebar, I prefer a right-hand sidebar because I like to have my opt-in form right there, top right. You'd be amazed how many people go to my website to read my blog posts and subscribe to my blog. Well, now there's actually a there's actually a pop up as well. So I'm finding that's actually working. I'm starting to see my subscribers increasing. So it does increase your subscribers when you have a pop up. Uh, I'll show you how to install that. I'm also going to show you how to use a landing page if your theme allows for that. Not all themes give you the option to create a landing page, but most of them give you somewhat of an option. So I'm going to show you how to use that to create a capture page. And then I'm going to show you how to use um, Ad Creator to make a few different ones. I love Ad Creator. You know, I get an idea and I'm really finding the more I use it, the more I'm, you know me, I'm, I'm a keep it simple girl, right? And so I go in for the simplest things and just make it nice and clean and, and uh, it works. So I'm going to share with you a few um, templates that I've created. You're welcome to use them and edit them as you see fit. But let's get going and start with talking about building your list with a pop-up form. So number one, you guys all have an autoresponder, yes? How many of you have GVO? I'm looking in the room and I'm saying everyone here has a GVO account, yes? GVO hosts and profit or, or might be pure leverage. You all have a GVO account, good. So I'm going to show you how to create a pop-up code with your GVO form. So you have to set up your campaign and you have to set up your form. That's already done. I'm not going to show you how to do that here. Like I said, if you need help learning how to set that up, get in touch with me and I'll help you set that, set that up. I'll send you where you need to go. You can just go to Contact List Builder and learn to do it. Um, I think on the Con Curation Works blog, there's some information there. I've, I may have a shared code. I'm not sure. But um, Contact List Builder for sure. You'll learn how to do all this or contact me. Um, we're going to show you how to add it to the header of your blog because that's where it goes. Okay, so don't get scared now. You're going to go into the HTML editor of your blog. Okay? You okay with that, everyone? This is It's not hard. All right? And you can break it, though. So you got to be aware that you, you know, I like to, if I'm going to go in there and, and edit with that code, I take a copy of it or... Um, you know, I make lots of room where I'm adding what I'm adding so I can take it out if I need to. Uh, but just, you know what, it, it's not hard to do, okay? Powerful. So what happens is that all, you all know what a pop-up is, right? So when somebody comes to your website, so if you all go to open up your browser and go to JanetLegere.com and you'll see what I mean. So what it means is there's, and it's not very pretty. I'm going to show you how you can edit it. I'm going to be working on that to edit it and make it prettier. Right now, it's just a, it's just the default. All right. 
Uh, I made a couple edits and I'll show you what I did. Uh, it's really simple. So number one, you have to have your campaign set up and you have to have your forms set up, okay? And so then you go in, so here, in this example, I was making one for uh, Morning Motivator and then I went in and made one for my personal contacts. So I just went up to, oh, here we go, I just went up to here, the campaign list, and I select the list that I want to make sure that's active, and then I pick the form I want, and there it is right there. See that little icon right there, the second from the right? It's called Popover Windows. Pretty cool, hey? You didn't know that was there, did you? I actually only discovered it yesterday. I thought, I'm going to go see if GDO offers the ability to create a pop-up. I mean, why wouldn't they? They're internet marketers. All right, here we go. So once you click the generate the pop-up, this is what comes up. All right, now, as you can see here, there's lots you can edit. You can change the colors. You can change the size. You can change the font. You can change the border. You can change the words. So right up here on my example, it says subscribe to get my tips and strategies. Right here, it says warning. So you can, you can change those words. Right here, display position. So you can say where you want it to go, where you want it to sit on your page. You can manage the margins here and there's special effects. So there's lots of things that you can do here. Take your time with it. I haven't really done anything. I did make the title bigger here, right here. I made, I, all I did was make it bigger. I made it 14 point, I kept it bold. I left the color, but I'm gonna change it because my blog is navy blue. And so I'm gonna change it from this uh, bright blue to a, a navy blue or more of a royal blue. All right, so, but you can see that you can make all those options. So let me show you what it looks like. So really, do you guys think this is cool? Let me know. Do you guys think this is cool? So down at the bottom of the page, once you've selected all of your options that you want, at the bottom, you click, you can preview it and have a look at it. And then you can generate the code. And when you generate the code, because this box is not there when you come here, okay? This box right here is not there when you open the page, not until you click generate. And so then you're going to copy the code well, and this is where it's going to get fun, okay? Sit back, hold on to your seatbelts, because now we're going to go play with some HTML. You're going to log into your blog. You don't get scared now. You're going to log into your blog, and on the left-hand side, you're going to click on Appearance. That's going to bring up the Appearance menu. See, there's, whoops, here we go. There's Appearance. And this is the Appearance menu. And at the very bottom of the Appearance menu, you can see, wait a little teeny weeny thing. It says, oops. Oh, get back here. All right, this went way too far on me. I do apologize. All right, there we are. Nope. Okay, here we go. All right, so I've got my code. All right, now we're in our blog. Right down here, let me grab the pencil. Right down here says editor. You see it went, it did, oh, I see what happened. Yeah. All right, let's go here. No, where do I want to get in my blog? Here. All right. Anyway, you see the editor button down there? All right, right down there. It's because my things are up. Let me get rid of the controls. Let me get rid of these. They don't need to be up. There we go. Now we'll be fine. Okay. Editor. Right there. The editor. And once you bring up the editor, it's just going to bring up the main screen. Now, okay, don't get scared. You're going to come over here on the right-hand side, and you're going to find the header. See here? Header PHP. The file you're looking for, and it even says the file name there. It says header.php. Now, there might be a different way to do this, but this works. Okay. So you click on the header PHP and it brings up that file like a text file. See it all, look at all that gibberish. You see all the gibberish? Anybody here HTML savvy or are you new to HTML? Like, I'm, where are you on, you know, are you a newbie to HTML? Are you comfortable with it? Are you expert at it? I'm comfortable with HTML. I can copy and paste anything. I can go in and figure out where things are. Um, 
that you don't need to be that anything. All right. So what you need to look for, you're going to look for, see we're in that box there, the red box, you're looking for, and I'm going to put it in the text chat, you're looking for the body code. And it starts like that. Okay. It's got the little um, curate, the, the less than sign. Yes, the less than sign. It has a less than sign and then body. So that's a code for opening of the body. So I just went to the end of that first line and I clicked enter a couple times. And I pasted my form code right there. Okay, Right there is my form code. Okay. That's it. And then you come down and you click update. And then you go to your website and bing bada boom poof there it is what do you think did that look pretty simple let me go back so you're going to go into your blog you're going to click appearance remember you've already set up your campaign right that's the hard part you're going to click appearance you're going to click editor and you're going to come way over here on the right hand side and you're going to scroll down under the templates to header and you're going to paste this code in your header in the body of the header. Actually, I don't think it even matters. It can be in the header of the header too. I didn't experiment with that, but yeah, copy. So before you paste your code in here, highlight everything, you know, right click everything and select all, copy it and paste it into Notepad because sometimes you mess up. So when I come in here, I find where I want to put it, and I'll click enter, 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 and I make lots of space. And then after I paste my code, I go enter, 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 so there's lots of white space, so I know exactly where my code is. It's okay to do that in HTML. Yeah, it doesn't hurt it. Does this look simple enough for you guys? Do you see where you do this? It's really easy. Pretty cool, hey? Now, you can edit it. Okay, you can edit it. This gets people on your list, man. It works really well. This isn't even pretty. You can make the border wider, which I, you know, I'm going to go in and I'm going to play with it. All right, I will go in and play with it. Plus, if you do have HTML experience, you can take the code and probably do some magic with it, make it look a little bit different because they give you lots of options, right? So this is what happens when you come here. Now I can select to have this show up every time you go to my website or just once, or I can say three times. I can choose how often you see it. Yeah, you can make it however you want. Yeah, it depends on your HTML experience. That's right, Don. So pretty cool, isn't it? All right. Any questions on about how to do that? I, I had no idea that GVO offered that. And when I found it, I went, whoa I got to figure this out but I mean I had to get it all set up for our call today but I'm going to be adding it to every website I have that's powerful so powerful and then you just want to make sure that your opt-in form redirects them back to the page right you want to go back to your blog because they're there to see whatever they're there to see opt-in widget how many of you have an opt-in widget on your sidebar yes or no I can go down the screen and tell you who does and who I don't know <laughs> Barbara 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 all right Barbara that is first on your list okay you need to get an opt-in form on your blog it's in it's imperative that you have an opt-in form on your blog so that when people come there I mean, the pop-up is nice, but you still have to have it there so that when people come there, uh, if they've said no to that, they might choose after they've been on your blog that they really like what they see and they want to get on your list and get more. So I'm going to show you how to add a widget to your sidebar. Again, you have to have your campaign already set up and you already have to have your opt-in code. Okay? doesn't matter what autoresponder you use. GVO is easy. So we're back under that appearance again. Here we are. Eh? Look at that HTML. Goodness gracious, we never end. So under appearance, there's a widget menu item. You guys all know widgets. So you're just going to go and you're going to grab the text widget. And I think you guys know that you just you left click with your mouse and you just grab it and you pop it wherever you want it. So you're going to put it right at the top. See where mine is? 
right? Get my tips and strategies. If you're on my website, you've seen it. I'll show it in a minute. And then it pops up with a code box. That's where you paste your code. You're going to see that I've done something a little different with mine. And then you click save. So once you paste your code, you have to make sure that you click save right there. Okay. And bing, bada, boom, poof. Now, how did I do that, man? I got a picture. I got my Skype button. That woman is a magician. I simply put, used a banner code and put that before the form code to put my picture there. And then I went and grabbed the Skype code, which you can get from the Skype site. And I put that at the bottom of my form code. My form code is my form code. It starts with form and it ends with form. I can put anything I want before it or after it. Bet you didn't know that, did you? Did you all know that? Very powerful to have uh, my picture there. I'm saying get my strategies. I could, if I was giving away a report or an ebook, I would have a picture of that report there. Okay? Make sense? If you go to the Morning Motivator website, you'll see on the right-hand side, there's um, a picture of As a Man Thinketh. You can get that book for free when you subscribe to the Morning Motivator. All right, let's talk about a landing page. So if your theme offers you the ability to create a landing page, it can be a powerful way to create a landing page, to create another capture page. It's just another page you can have out there. You can never have too many websites out there with your form on it. Trust me, okay? The more ways that you have for people to get on your list, the better. All right, so here we are. I have created a new page, number one. So under here, pages. Okay, so here we are. We're under pages now. I created a new page, but before I saved it, here's my template defaults, right? Usually it's that default template. You guys may not even know that this exists. You can, you can choose different pages even when you're doing your post you can make it look different you can have it a, a different thing so i can select full width disable sidebar template so i don't want a sidebar this is just an opt-in form right or i could have one column no sidebar same thing i didn't try that one to see if it would look different does right, so that make sense do you see what to do that well, let me show you what it looks like it's not that pretty on here, and I kind of stretched it when I made the picture, but you get the idea. So all I did was take what's on my widget and put it here. I could um, actually put a description on here and talk about me and why they'd want to get on my list. All right? Pretty effective. This could even be my about page, however I want to do that. Make sense? And you're just going to, I'm just going to go back a slide here. You're going to put your opt-in code. Remember, you have to already have your campaign set up. You're going to just paste your opt-in code into the text portion of your blog right here, okay? So you're going to, you're going to go into the text portion and uh, paste your code. And then it's going to come out. You're going to save it, publish it. And then you're going to have a page that looks like that. And if you want to copy my form and my picture, please do. Put that on every blog you have, okay? I would love for you guys to copy this page exactly. I'll give you the code, no problem. <laughs> Would that be cool here? Janet Legere, subscribe to Janet's list. Wouldn't that be cool if I, you know, you guys, I could get people to just have a my page on their blog that where people can get on my list. I, there's an idea. I'm going to start something with that. All right, let's talk a bit about capture pages. And then I'm going to wrap this up. I got to get the heck out of here. <laughs> I have children I have to get at home for. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't be running, but I have to get home before they get home from school. All right, my top recommendation is Ad Creator to create capture pages. Now, there's lots of programs out there. Yeah, there lots, okay, lots of uh, pro programs that create really cool capture pages. What I like about Ad Creator is that I can create my own blank from from a blank screen and I can create banners and and there's just it's it's really a powerful little tool now it's affordable and it offers a wide variety of designs to choose from or you can just go with a blank slate upload your own graphics and everything so I'm going to show you examples this is something else I like about ad creator is that I can create designs and share them and you can see that I do have the share code there 
Um, if you guys want these shared codes, let me know. I'd be happy to get them to you or you can write them down. I'll leave it up here long enough. Hopefully you can tell that that between the F and the F is an O. I mean, is a zero, not an O. This is a, a generic make money from home capture page. And so you would hear in the middle where it says your name, right there, you would put your name. So if I'm making this for me, it would say Janet Legere invites you. I would upload my own picture here. And of course, I would put my name and my Skype ID. And of course, on the edit, I would put my opt-in form. Pretty cool. But everything else would be here. The picture, you could use it exact as it is if you wanted. Remember, you can edit anything you want in, in these as well. So here's another one I made that just shows you the power. Now, I want you to notice something. I've used a white, a plain white background. And then all I did was put boxes on to put text in, and in different in different fonts or different size fonts. In this one, it's this is to get the book As a Man Thinketh. So I uploaded a picture, I put some words, subscribe below to get your free copy. Pretty cool. And then we're in a health and wellness company. There's lots of age related wellness companies out there. This one doesn't show any names or you guys probably all know what it is. All I did was took a snapshot of the company page that I liked where they were talking about this product. And I just put my opt-in form right over the picture. Isn't that cool? And an arrow. I stuck an arrow on it. It was just a picture. I, I uploaded the image and then I put the opt-in box on top and the arrow. Don has to go move the cars. The cleaners are cut here. Everything is happening today, all right? Everything. So here's another one that's a very generic one. This is uh, this is very generic. You're going to put a catchy headline, all right? So you can fill this in. Put a compelling headline about subscribing to your list. Discover how to put your picture, your logo. So I just went in and I took one of their, see, this was one they had. And I just changed the words so that you could go in and put information about your business. Just fill in the blanks, you know, edit everything rather than having to create a theme. So again, there's the code there if you want to use it. So that's it for me, guys, as far as pages. What was your favorite part today? I know mine. <laughs> Who's going out this afternoon and, to, and creating a pop-up for their blog? Huh? You know what? I really want to see if you guys do it. I want to see what you come up with as far as editing it, as far as making it look better. Uh, mine is just all I did was make it a bit bigger and made the words bigger. I didn't change the colors or anything. So um, I'm going to be playing with that. And I, I really want to see what you guys come up with as well. So who's going to go out and do that? I'm really curious. We're going to be a bit here. I know it's. I'm going to have to talk for a few minutes because Don has to go move the cars. I'm not sure. If, is it Don that's coming up next, Steve? Who's up next? Because I can talk for a couple of minutes, but I got to get the heck out of here. <laughs> All right, so are you guys out there? Did I lose you all? Who's going to go out? Who's going in? I, Don, I thought, had more. Yes. Don had to wrap up with some things, is what I thought. I Although we should be done because it is the bottom of the hour. So um, I'm not sure. Now, I do know, all right, guys, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw it out there. Is anybody out there? Steve seems to be the only. There we go. There's Mike. You can put a video on Ad Creator. Yes, you can, Mike. You can add video. So who's going out into GVO and going to create a pop-up for their form? and put it on their blog. Do you remember how to do it? It's not hard. Okay, so you're gonna go into the, um, I can even go back to that. You can even go, you just go into the, um, buddy, here we are. Come back, come back slide, come back. <laughs> and I'll do it the, the old fashioned way if it's gonna be that way. 
Oh, I can hear the street cleaners out there. I told Don we should park in the back. I don't know. <laughs> All right. All right, so here we are. No, that's the widget. Hang on. There we go. Okay, so here we are under appearance. You're going to click the editor. Okay, remember, it's, you can write that down. Appearance, editor, and on the right-hand side, you look for the header, and you put it in the body. It's that easy. All right, guys, have fun with that, all right? Have fun with it. I want to see what you come up with. Post in the group. Let us see what you come up with. And uh, that will be a lot of fun. Anybody going to do that? Who else is out there? So what I wanted to ask you guys is, are you available? Um, I, I have. I, I don't as much as others do. Uh, I'll probably start using them a bit more. But, yeah, I've just been busy, Mike. But, you know, doesn't stop me building my list, okay? In my pictures there videos are great but they're also um bandwidth intensive my objective when i'm advertising these pages these are on you know safe lists and what have you and i just want people to go there and, and subscribe most often they're subscribing because they see my name and my picture but video works too the thing in about ad creator you can add video there as well any more questions I'm just going to see where Don is. Oh, look at that. He's back. Perfect timing. My goodness. He went and moved two cars in less than three minutes. I'm impressed. Who's impressed? All right, Adrian's going to do it as soon as she gets her computer back. Awesome. Good stuff. Who else? Gloria, are you going to go throw up a, a, a form on your blog? How about Joe, Michael, Ruth? I'm going to tell you something. It, if you do it, you're going to see an increase in subscribers, all right? So I want to hear about your results. I want to see what you come up with. Play with it. I want to see what you come up with as far as the, the editing that, um, the thingamajiggy over here. This thing. <laughs> the pop-up window. The pop-over windows, it's called. Yeah, yeah. anywhere that you can access and edit your blog. You may not be able to edit that blog, Mike. So, uh, But if you can, then um, go for it. Well, that's it for me, Don. I'm going to turn the room over to you. And I am out of here, guys. So you're going to see me leave the room not wanting to be rude. I do need to take my computer with me so because it, it goes where I go. Don't need my webcam, but I do need my computer. Got some work to do. Got some connecting do, to do tonight. Uh, tomorrow, remember, we're gone. We're on the road for two days. So you won't really be hearing from us. Maybe a little in the evening when we stop. Uh, we are doing an overnight, so we're two days out to Victoria. Uh, once we get settled there, you'll see us back online. We'll be working from Victoria, so it's kind of a working vacation. Really looking forward to hanging out um, with everybody. I mean, get, we've had a, a great time with the kids last night. Looking forward to hanging with them again tonight. And then off we go on the road to see more kids. So, hey, life is good. All right, I got to go back into chat mode, and I'm out of here, guys. Thank you so much. I hope you picked up a tip or two today. I'm looking forward to hearing how it helps you. Have a great day, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, being on these calls. I'll let Don talk to you about having our call next week and see if we're going to do that. And I'm out of here. You guys are awesome. I want to thank uh, Steve and Janet for the awesome information that they've, that they've brought us. Uh, unfortunately, we've run out of time, and I still have to talk about AdSense, getting that on your blog. In addition, I also have to talk about Shareaholic. Now, um, are you guys okay with another workshop? Because we've probably got about another hour's worth of information to go through. And uh, probably a half an hour just to recap everything, everything that we've got. Is that good with everyone? We'll uh, meet next week, same time, same channel. And what I will do, I've got a lot of information right here already in the slides that I put together uh, for the AdSense plugin and uh, for Shareaholic. Uh, both are income opportunities for you. And um, 
You know, one of the uh, I, I was going to just open the conversation and talk a little bit about uh, above the fold when it uh, when we're talking about above the fold. Uh, that is the first piece of real estate that an individual sees when they go to your website, and that area is called above the fold. What you're going to find in this area is a whole bunch of really cool stuff. On the left top side, I've got. Uh, let me see if I could. Let's grab the pencil here. Right here, that is uh, Google AdSense. And normally I would have a Google AdSense up top here and one right over here as well. But uh, I, I, in this particular case, I don't uh, because this blog is still uh, a work in progress. And you can see below the fold, I've got a Google AdSense set up here down here and right here just below the fold this whole area here that is Shareaholic and what Shareaholic does is they pay you for uh, the clicks that people will click on and go to the articles that, th that they're showing for that for your particular keyword category that type of thing so the information they match articles to what you're talking about so if your topic was marketing they would attach a whole bunch of different marketing uh, articles that match your keywords in that article and that's what Shareaholic is all about and that's what we're going to uh, be talking about next week and uh, you know I, I just want to recap again and say the information that we learned today with regards to keyword research is pivotal uh, you play with that this week Remember, we have the Skype room that we can answer your questions and even help you with your keyword research if you like. But that will give you an idea how you can structure your categories, how you can structure your content. And of course, uh, next week, we'll get into how to monetize your blog. And the first step to that was getting that subscriber form on your blog because the whole goal is to build followers. Uh, another example of a subscriber form pop-up, you could use a, uh, you know, like my page pop-up, you know, where people would just click on, yeah, I love your page, and uh, you'd have a bunch of followers that way as well. And you can interchange the two pop-ups or have a different pop-up for a different category of your, of your blog. So there are a number of ways to monetize it. And... Um, At Don Don Legere, that's more of a, more of an experimental blog, and just to see how that's going. So I do have some numbers I want to recap with you as well next week, uh, showing the revenue that we've earned so far over the past 14 days setting this up, and uh, I think you'll be excited because there is so much potential there, and if you've got the right idea, the right niche, and you have the right market sense, I guess, uh, you can make a lot of money just on Google AdWords and Shareaholic, sharing content. And there are a number of different offerings out there that will pay you advertising-wise. Now, over time, as you get more and more readership, if you as you get better and better at what you're doing, you will be able to start selling ads on your own because people are going to want to put their ads on your site. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I want to thank Steve and Janet for doing such a wonderful job. had no idea that it would go so far, but we do have about an hour and a half to catch up on next week. So next week, same time, same channel. Anyone have any questions?